Thanks to Amaran for sponsoring this video. So Rick, you're gonna find out real quick that I don't prepare anything for these, okay. including what I'm going to say now. Uh, I'm just told that by Patrick. Patrick Tomas was here as usual, recording help with the video. Thanks, Patrick. What's up, Patrick? Hello. Uh, he just says we're rolling, and then I go, oh, I guess I better say something witty. Did that count? That counts. Okay. Rick Beato, everybody. Am I saying your name right? You are. You know, when I first found your channel years ago, I thought it was Beato. And I was like, that's that's good, because he probably plays the drums or something. Everybody thinks that. And then when I turned it was Beato, I was disappointed. I was like, you're missing some, some, that's some cheap puns in there, you know? Gerald, that's why I say my name at the beginning of every video, so that people <laughs> know it. But people still get it wrong, though. Yeah. Now I don't even know where to look, because do we look here? I'm a big fan of Rick's channel, big, big fan of your videos. And I've looked at this shot, I guess. Well, normally I wouldn't be in it. And normally I'd look at the shot and go, that's a cool shot. In fact, I asked you if it was green screen, because lately you've had this, you got a really sharp, cooler tone to you, and a really warm, incredibly deep shot behind you. Didn't seem, didn't seem real. I didn't buy it. People have accused me of having a green screen for years. I like you said accused you, as if like you're committing a crime or whatever. So audio wise, this is picking you up, you use kind of like, this is just a, uh, like a handy recorder, right? That's a, that's a Zoom H6, I think. We don't use it for everything. Sometimes we use labs, or a lot of times we use labs. If and you were talking to camera, would you just be this far away yelling at yes, that thing, though? Yeah. I speak loudly. You speak loudly, too, though. I do. I speak more loudly once the camera rolls for some reason, right. you know? <laughs> but I would be afraid in, in most spaces I've, I've been in. Uh, I'm sure Patrick's getting this right now, but, like, the distance here in an untreated space, I and mean, that's going to be room city. You're going to hear, like, everything going on. It's now. surprising. When I compress it, it's, it's pretty dry in here. That's not bad. No. That's pretty good. Yeah. I guess this is a recording studio after It all. is a recording studio, but we do use labs for for interviews when we're, we usually set up back a little further and we'll have overhead um, MKH-50 Sennheiser. Nice choice. I love and them. Then, uh, and then we'll use Sennheiser, or what do we use? DPH labs? I forget. DPA? DPA, I mean. DPA like labs. 40, 40 whatever, 60 yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. 40, they're, they're the 40, best labs, 40, probably. 60, yeah. 70. Labs. <laughs> when I make my regular videos that are not interviews, I use the I use that. When we do those, we record the sound in the control room. Because I typically, when I'm interviewing people, they're playing. They can be playing the piano and talking. So we have all this stuff going on. Do you have somebody mixing? Yes. So yeah. I have my uh, Ken, who's my uh, been my engineer for 24 years. So he, he comes in on those days. Nice. Uh, I'm curious though to see when I get this back and edit what this sounds like for both of us. But otherwise, for the gear nerds who care, we're going to be switching over to, I just have the Rode uh, Wireless Pros on, we'll be just using the lab that came included with them. It's not a bad lab. If you were to do an over the shoulder, yep. this is what this is normally what you look at, so you got a little production monitor here, whatever yep. you would see yourself, make sure you don't get any boogers or something, right? Yep. Is this, this is not, this is just a computer monitor. Right? Correct, yes. Okay. And I can tell by this that you're using a Sony camera. All right, what do we got here? So you got a 300, 300 watt, this is an Aperture 300X, and a Light Dome 2. Trusty little combo. Yep. On a rolling C stand. A7 IV. I thought, didn't they used to put it down here? Oh, that was if it was an S. It was an A7S. Okay, this is an A7 IV. With a 24 to 70 GM. This is pretty similar to the setup I used to shoot my videos. Wonder where you got that idea. <laughs> I got my first camera. I mean, close. I shot an iPhone for a few videos, but I got a. Uh, Canon T5i. So did you have to just basically learn everything? Learn? How, did you edit your own videos? I, when we, I, I edited when we my own videos. came in, you were editing. Still? Yeah, I, had, I still go through all my videos. I mean, Tom will do the basic edit and everything, and then I come in and, but I'll edit videos all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So was it a big learning curve for you before that? No. Had you had any video experience? Or? Never edited a video, but edited editing in Pro Tools all the time. It's exactly the same thing. I guess. Just now you're looking at a picture yourself instead yeah. of listening to the. Yeah. It was just uh, did. The things, there are so many um, muscle memory things with the key commands between Final Cut and, and Pro Tools. Are because the shortcuts the same? The shortcuts are slightly similar. They're one key off, okay. and you're so used to doing it that it would screw you up. You know, I was shooting 29, for example, 2997, uh, just so that you don't want to have any blur oh, as, opposed to, as opposed to 24. But this was 24, right? No, this is 30p too. I didn't even notice. Yeah, this is 30p. So you're shooting 30p a lot because of. Ah, okay. We, we've done some other tours where people, you know, they have reasons for shooting in 30p because they're like shooting screens or something else, but I never considered and if we fast record, fingers. And yeah, fast fingers, and if you record, we, and a lot of times we use QuickTime, and QuickTime is 60, and so if you record audio out of there using loopback, 
or I mean, using QuickTime and Loopback, it doesn't sync up. It starts to drag because you lose the frame. So you have to keep drag cutting the audio and dragging it, and it's kind of a pain. Yeah, I think there's some kind of rate stretch tool. There is, yeah, one. you can do that, but um, it's easier if you just set it in 30. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I don't ever really notice. I think that a lot of my community is like filmmaker community, and they're hard set on the 24p thing. And I think yeah. it's fair up to a certain point that a lot of YouTube content is a bit more. It feels a bit more broadcasty to me. Yeah. Like it's a person, and they're here, and they're telling you something's yeah. going on. And I think 30p is completely fine. I have a a, um, a friend that's a Hollywood cinematographer that he said you should change your lights, the lights back here to, to 3,000 Kelvin, and then run this at 4,700, I think, and and then cool this off. Yeah, and, and then cool this off. Yeah. To make so, that color contrast. Yeah. So that so it would look, <laughs> we wouldn't have the green issues and. Uh, and the lights would be more balanced. It wouldn't look like this is white light on me and the lights behind me where it's orange back there. It's not completely rare to do that, to where you white balance to a particular part of the scene and the light with something else, but yours is very stark. It's like you are almost look like you're in daylight and then the rest of the room looks like it's in tungsten. Yeah. And that was part of the reason why I thought that the shot looked a little bit like, is that real? You yeah. Know? Um, what, what is lighting? Are these all just like incandescent bulbs or whatever? No, or so like these are three... Um, these are th um, 3,000 degree, or th or th I think they're 3,000 degree. Are they LEDs? Yes. Yep. That's they're cool. all LEDs, but they're Patrick, all the same. Patrick, you're loving this, that it's all lamps. I love right? lamps. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? And sometimes we'll light across the guitars so that you can see them better. We'll, uh, we'll put a light down low. Unrelated to everything, but uh, what's your favorite guitar that is in front of us right now? Electric uh, or acoustic? Uh, my signature guitar right there. Oh, yeah, I heard you got a... <laughs> this was not like a plug or a setup. No. I completely fell for it, though. I forgot that... This is recent, right? Like 2021, something like that? Yeah. That Gibson... Yep. How'd you, how'd you finangle that? The signature guitar. Is it like a... Oh, okay. Is it LP special or whatever? It's a Les Paul double cut special, yeah. I love uh, uh, the satin finish on it there. Yeah, what's the wood where you can see the, the pitting and stuff like that? It's like just, a, it's just, it doesn't have any wood filler in it, and it's, uh, it's a Pelham blue color and P90s. And pretty it's pretty cool, a, man. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Thank um, you. You got a little kicker light behind. You got a few lights I'm noticing, little panels everywhere. Yep. So we got one over here that's like a bit of a fill. This one, I guess, is like a hair light. Yep. And then what the ones in the back, what do you use those for? So those, we, um, those we'll use when we set up further back here. When I do an interview, we tip typically set ba back here, and those would be the hair lights. Okay. So the chairs will be here. So I just don't like seeing stands, so we have power in the ceiling everywhere. All the panels we custom made here, these are, these are panels with, with compressed fiberglass 703, and this is Guilford of Maine fabric here behind this. Uh, that's that's probably compressed fiber. This is probably the mo that deadens the sound the most. Basically, your whole wall. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't even realize it at first that the whole yeah wall the whole wall is all um, compressed fiberglass. Even this is compressed fiberglass. These are these are uh, all built panels. Those are hand built panels. We built those years ago. Is this your main editing station? Yes. Um, and is this all this does is editing? Like the yes. it doesn't it's not part of the studio. Uh, well, we do record stuff in here occasionally, but um, what are these monitors? These are old, old event Brother monitors. Studio Six. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, I've had them since 1999. I have many sets of monitors, so I probably have 20 different sets of monitors here. So these are good for um, cranking um, up, like when we're unnecessary flexing. So we talked about, yeah, Final Cut. I assume there's a Mac somewhere. Yeah, I have a Mac oh, Studio there. there, yeah. Is that, you know which one that is? M it's the M2. M2, okay. Yeah. Are these the Mac screens? Yep. What are they called, Patrick? Studio displays. Studio displays. So the workflow would be, we would stop recording here. This records internally, or it just, or no, it's that just opening? that sends it, yeah, okay. sends it through the headphone. SD card, comes out of yep. there, and then you ingest here, yep. everything's done right here? Yeah, but people don't see behind the screen typically. Somebody said, Rick, did you buy a piano for this? I did a video with Brad Meldog, great piano player. Did you buy a piano for the video? I said, no, it's behind the, it's behind the camera that we shoot. It's yeah. always there. So we got here a big old Yamaha Grand. Yep, Yamaha C5. How long has this been in your, in your life? A few years. It's a little... Oh, that's nice. Yep. When we have guitar players here, I will track the guitars in here. I usually will have the head out there and run a long speaker cable into here, mic it up, 
it goes into the control room, and then we play it through the speakers out there. And the sound is being recorded here. It's actually kind of complicated. So out there, it's more of like a PA setup? Yes, basically. And then in here is the actual yeah. cabinet or whatever. Yeah, and people think that when, when Ingve or Nuno are blasting out there, that it's blasting out there, but it's actually blasting in here, and they're hearing it at a normal volume out there. But people if, think, because they see it, the amp, it's usually on a cabinet, they're thinking like, I can't believe these guys are listening. That amp must be so loud. What's the bleed like if you didn't have the PA? You can't hear it at all out can, there. You can't hear much in here? No? no. Are these, like these doors are? Yeah, it's double doors and these are floating floors here. You know what, Patrick, you come inside. Yep. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to close the door. It's just you and me. Okay, say something, Rick. I will. Just keep talking. If I listen carefully up against the door, but I think if I was out there, I wouldn't hear very much. Yeah, if you're out in the middle of the room, you can't hear anything. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So. We got another, I just called it another guitar. We got another guitar in here. I'm crossing my interests now, Rick. Yeah. I'm getting confused. Another camera in here. Another, this is an A7S three. That would be an angle for, for if we're recording the uh, me turning knobs on there, if I'm talking <laughs> about that. That sounded sarcastic, but yeah. I, is that, it's actually a thing. Yeah, so if I'm saying, okay, here's the settings on this, and I'll sit there and I'll talk to the camera here. So this room gets used for uh, for interviews. Anything that's done out there, we record all the audio. All the labs will come in here for that. Okay. And so th we'll have a Pro Tools session that'll record all the audio. Yeah, you realize that's a monitor speaker you're yes. touching, right? Well, yeah. I don't I, think you I want mean, to put your labs in here. there. Or, no, down there. <laughs> uh, so... Um, all the audio comes in here and gets mixed here. And you'll have an engineer in here or whatever. Yes, okay. yeah. So every room has... Every room has lights. Lights and potentially a camera setup or, or like yeah. some sort of angle figured. Yeah. What, what are we using here, by the way? Amaran. Okay. We got... There's your segue. Did you know, Rick? Amaran is the sponsor Fantastic. of today's video. Did you... It's like the people are probably like, yeah, you probably put that like there no. before they started the shot. I, I love that. those. This is set up. Use them all the time. This okay, so how does an ad read go? What would that well, be? you, you got a lot of different approaches. I, I like that. This is a good question. It's a really good. What, what's a good segue to an ad read? Get Rick to ask you how to do one. Well, I, I'm a big fan of their lights. So, so I'll tell you, uh, I am too. Mm -hmm. I recently redid my studio, and I am probably, I don't know, running like 75% AMRAN lights now. The other 25% are aperture. And I think that Amaran is trying to really carve out an identity for themselves right now because people think of them as like sort of a, a type of aperture light. They're really focused more on the independent creator or like a solo, a person who's working solo, working nimble, that kind of thing. Put a light up, you can turn it on and off with your phone, get recording right away, right? And so for somebody like me, who's, I still do everything solo, you know, you said you got a couple people helping out. That's what I need. And my lights don't move. They, they go on a light stand, they stay there. And they're doing a lot of color options now, which, uh, and not just by color, like you seem to love your warm and cool tones. Yeah. But if you ever want to throw a little pink, green, whatever in, in the shot, uh, I think it's getting more important because creators these days are trying to look for a way to like get some kind of aesthetic uniqueness to their shot. We don't all have 40 foot studios with 100 guitars in them, Rick. So <laughs> some people need to splash some color on the wall, right? <laughs> And so a lot of these lights, whether it's their tube lights like the T4C or T2C or now their like COB lights, the 150C and the 300C, uh, which have a lot of output, are also full color. And I'm sure they're going to be pleased to know that Rick Beato is all rigged up with the... Uh, and I wasn't involved in it at all. Just, uh, how do you like that? Yeah, how do you like that? So that's how you do an ad read, Rick. My God. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, that's tiring. <laughs> so this is the drum room here. Oh, nice. A lot brighter room. Another Amaran light. Yep. Shameless plug. And you got an Aperture 120D up there. Yeah. I do. I do like. I like that all your rooms just have lights in them. I think it makes sense. Yeah. It's, it, I prefer it. Lights and cameras in every room. So we're getting ready to do a uh, um, a session here, a drum session. So we have the we have the cameras already set up in here. Who's gonna record some stuff? My old band is. Get you're getting the band back together? Yeah. <laughs> so these mics will plug into a snake that's right here, a box that's here. That's uh, that will be run into the control room. Right. Do you record with your band still often? It's the first it? time in, uh, I, I made one video where I did uh, one song and that was uh, the first time in 22 years. So we're gonna make a record. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. I love this room. It's. Um, you mentioned it and it's I much, agree. It's wetter. Yeah. Much, we much both more live. I knew you were gonna talk about yeah. the, is that conducive to drum recording? Yeah, I know it's drums sound great drums. in this room. And what is Rick's stuff number three? I have no idea. 
This is completely unrelated to everything, but yep. I figured because you do so many videos on like different riffs and stuff like that, yep. the best chance at somebody telling me what's in my head would be you or when this video goes out, somebody in the comments will know. I have a little lick okay. that's in my head and I can't figure out what it is, why I know it, and I right. don't think it's something I made up. Okay. This is out of tune. It's roundabout. That's what I thought. Well, see, I don't think it is. I was no, gonna no, say no, the I was first gonna part say, was, yeah. was I was gonna say my guess is that it's yes, but roundabout someone's like No, that's no, that's part of the it, right? Oh no, I wait, I know what this is. Uh, stained? Not stained, no. Hello, dun, dun. it's like a Creed song. Dun, dun, no, it's dun, dun. I know that like I know that song. It's not that song either. <laughs> I've gone through this in my head. Higher, higher, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were thinking of like a uh, one last breath or whatever. Well, yeah, something, one of them. This part, and then I think it's like a B minor, and then like I think it's Creed. It's Creed, right? Yeah. Pretty sure it is. Yeah. And then, but, but then there's this like. I don't think that's part of it. No, but that opening is a Creed song. Oh, that yeah. is. Yeah. I know what you're talking about, and that's like, in my girl, I'm six feet from the new. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's I'll a different song. It. But I, so yeah, maybe I, honestly, maybe I made it up. Maybe it's Yes and Creed, and I was just did, diddling around one day, but, but it's been in my head for like four years, and if somebody in the comments is like, no, Gerald is playing an actual thing, and it's... Leave a comment, let yeah, us know exactly, what it is. Because I don't know what it is, and it's been, it's been rotting my brain. What do you do with um, copyright? Mm. You have things where you're playing riffs and stuff, like a decent portion of them. Yeah, Sometimes get, you actually play the actual song, Yeah, right? they get demonetized. Yeah? Yeah. So what do you do? Well, it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> do you go through the whole, like, this is fair use, let me dispute, and all that? Not really. I could, but... but um, yeah. So you have to be careful with these things if you're going to add any of this stuff to the video. I would, uh... You might want to think Let's about that. Let's play backwards. I've completed your tour, and uh, you passed. So Thank first you. off, I would like to award you with my coveted purple sticker. Put it on. Wow! Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and also, here's your uh, your score sheet. As you can see, you did you did quite well. Wow! And um, ninety nine point four. <laughs> <laughs> that he leaned into it. I'm not sure what the minus 0.6 was, but that's okay. Well, it was the... Cable management. If you just want to do a little pan over there. <laughs> I saw it. Don't think I didn't see it. Illegal. And normally I would dock points for excess, but because you can always just... <laughs> You can always just rest on the fact that this is a studio, that, a working studio. Yes. Oh, I need all these guitars. I can point for excess. I like it. <laughs> how should we? How should we end this video? What you give me? Give me the final word. The word is. Tommaso. You know. That's Mo. right. That's Mo. the first. <laughs> like, that's, that's where the right. content really can't. You're you're interested, but you're also kind of like, what the hell is this guy doing here? What's about to happen? I'm going to the zoo. Do do do. Um... <laughs> I'm totally gonna cut it right there.